Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through each one of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets that you can download in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of the time when you're in the exam room working through your exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be really great. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. And so now we're going to make a start on the third of the 2017 Grade 5 Theory Past Papers. And we're going to be having a look at page 16 to begin with. So to start that paper, if you turn with me to page 16, and we'll have a go at paper C. So I always suggest that you have a go of this on your own, first of all, it doesn't matter if you go wrong, it's always better to learn by your mistakes. Uh, always work in pencil, I use a mechanical pencil just so it stays nice and sharp, and then if you've got a trusty eraser to hand, it doesn't matter if you've made a mistake, you can just rub it out, and you'll probably need a ruler as well. And so I'm hoping that you've had a crack at this yourself, or if not the entire paper, uh, some of this first question, or listen to the first few tips that I give you and then press pause, have a go on your own then, and then re-access into the video later when you've had a go yourself. So I'm hoping you've had a crack at this, and so we're going to look at this. So all of the first question is referring back to this little extract of music here. And question one here, the first part of question one asks us to put in the correct time signature. So we're looking for the time signature, each of these bars should be the same. Now straight away um, we've got to decide what the bottom number is and I can see straight away that it's going to be an irregular time signature. So we've got a group of three, group of three, and then we've got groups of two as well. And so that means we're going to be in a, a regular time signature irregular, just make sure that sounds correct. Um, and now we need to decide if we're counting in crotchet beats, quarter notes, or quaver beats, eighth notes. Now if we start off counting in quaver beats, you can see it's just going to be far too busy a bar, so we're going to be counting in crotchet beats or quarter notes. And so now we just need to decide how many there are in each bar. So let's just count it out and just divide out. So we know we've got a definite crotchet beat a quarter note there. These two quavers, these two eighth notes, will give us one added together. There's one, there's one, and then um, this dot, I suppose I could have divided this differently, and this one will give us another one. So all together we've got one, two, three, four, five over four. Let's just look at the next bar. So I've got one here, We'll divide it differently, just show you. it doesn't matter how you add it up as long as it makes it in the end. This one and the dot gives us another crotchet beat or quarter note. We've got one here, we've got a quaver and a quaver, two eighth notes there, give us a crotchet beat or a quarter note, and then these two here give us one. So one, two, three, four, five, and so you can see the principle just uh, working out and adding up all the different units to make our full crotchet beats, full quarter notes per bar. There we go, so that one's done. So let's move on to the next question. So we've got a few performance directions. We've got some French performance terms now. This being relating to a French composer. So here, this here, Sede, or I presume that's how you pronounce it, dearie me. Uh, I know that it means yield or relax the speed. And here, per means little. So just because it's in multiple choice doesn't necessarily make it easier. There's no alternative just to revise these. Remember, it's all of the performance directions accumulated through all of the grades so far. And so I suggest that you group them thematically. 
and then maybe even color code them. So everything to do with slow or slowing down. You've got some linking words. All of your terms can be grouped together thematically. It's just um, perhaps an easier way of revising. You'll find your own way. Just get creative with that. And so let's move on to the next question. So question three asks us how many demi-semiquavers or 30 second notes are in the tied note. So both of the notes combined in bar one. So it's this here. So I'm just going to sketch out what it is we're adding up to first. So we've got a dotted crotchet or a quarter note tied to a quaver um, or eighth note. So then that's what we're looking for. And so first of all, because we're counting in 30 second notes or demi semi quavers, that's quite a lot. So I'm going to look at how many there are in a quaver or an eighth note. So we know that that divides into two semi quavers, which again divides into one, two, three, four demi semi quavers. And then we need to decide how many quaver beats we've got here. So we've got one, two, three, four quaver beats. So we need this times four. So there are four in a quaver. There are four quaver beats worth here. And so four fours are 16. That's our total. There we go. So let's move on to the next question. So turn the page with me. And we're going to go to page 15. Oh no, we're going to page 17. There we go, I'm getting all confused. Page 17, continuing with a different extract now. So we've got a little bit of Mozart here. Nice piano piece, I've played this, it's really pretty. So here we go, we need to describe the chords and we also need to say what note is in the bass. We need to give the position of the chord as well. And so let's just first of all map out what we need to be choosing from. Very helpful if you've told us that the key is A minor. So we need chords 1, 2, 4 and 5. So in A minor of course chord 1 will be based on A, 2 is B, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5. If you find that difficult counting in your head, just use a keyboard sketch to help you to just count that. So we want the 1st, the 3rd and the 5th. Don't worry about your key signature or accidentals or anything. Uh, the music will take care of that. And if we just mark out the root position A, first inversion B, second inversion C, that's all the thinking done. And so now we can just um, go ahead and answer the question. So we need to describe chords A and B. So chord A has got an E, A and a C in it, so that's chord one. That's the first part of that question answered. And then we can see that we've got an E in the bass, the lowest note is an E, so that's a one C. There we go. And so the next chord, now here's a big clue. Because there's a G sharp, we know that's the raised seventh, which always comes as part of the chord five. It's the middle note of chord five, so straight away we could answer that. But let's just work it through. We've got an E, a G, and a B, a G sharp. That's chord five. And the E is in the bass, so it's root position. So just five would do, or you could put five A. There we go, let's move on. So the next question asks us to rewrite the last left hand chord of bar two marked with an arrow, so it's this one here. The left hand chord is the lowest part here. And we need to make it sound at the same pitch, but we need to change the clef. So we're using the alto clef, which begins as middle C on the middle line. So let's get that in. And we just need to make sure we get the uh, correct octaves. So here, that's middle C, so we've got the B below that, we've got one note below that, and then the F. So here's the middle C, here. So the B below that is there, so we want 
B A G F. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's correct. So we'll need to change the direction of the stems. And there we go. That's that question completed. Let's move on to the next question. So describe fully each of these melodic intervals. Now I do always suggest that you have your circle of fifths, key signatures to hand, uh, and then all your thinking is done, you've got all your related major and minor keys, and I suggest that you do that just so you can um, concentrate on the task in hand and you've only needed to think of your key signatures once, because if you remember you need to treat every lowest note, every first note, as the tonic, regardless of the key signature or anything else that might affect it, um, apart from just applying the flats and sharps as necessary. So here, our lowest note is an A, and so we need to be thinking in A major or A minor. So first of all, we can first of all get the interval. So we know it's a one, two, a second. So that's half marks straight away, nice and easy. It's a melodic interval, because they come one after another, but the principle remains the same, whether it's harmonic or melodic. So now we need to decide whether it's um, major, minor, augmented or diminished. So A major would have a B natural in it. So A to B would be major. We've made it bigger by sharpening the B. So we've gone from major to augmented. We've augmented that interval. So we've got an augmented second. Let's move on to this next one. So first of all, we've got a one, two, three. We've got a something third. So that's easy peasy half marks. Now here, we're starting on an E sharp. That's quite a tricky um, keynote to be thinking of. So let's first of all think of it as an E. So E to G sharp. G sharp would be part of E major. So here we can see E to G sharp is major. And then because the bottom note is raised, we've made the interval smaller, and so we've gone from major to minor. So we know that's a minor third. Now here, we've got an interval that exceeds an octave, so I'm going to jump up and just jump the octave and take that to there. So we know that it's a compound interval, it's a compound one, two, three, fourth. So that's part of the marks. I'll just leave a gap because we just need to define that now a little more carefully. We need to fully describe this. So again, starting on a sharp is a tricky um, way of approaching it because it's difficult to think of whether you're in D sharp major. So let's have, first of all think if we're in D. So D to G would be perfect. And then because we've raised the lower note, we've made it smaller, and so we've gone from perfect to diminished. So we've got a compound diminished fourth. Alternatively, you could just count 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11. Just count that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, yeah, so you could say diminished 11th, that would be another way of looking at it, but you'd have to remember that the 11th is perfect to begin with. And so that's why I stick to the compound, because I've already learned that compound 4th is perfect, and uh, sorry, I've already learned that 4th is perfect, and so a compound 4th would also be perfect without having to remember any more numbers. Okay, let's carry on. And so now we've got to create these intervals. Again, they've asked us for a melodic interval, so just make sure you put the notes one after the other rather than one on top of each other, which would be a harmonic interval, like a harmony. These come one after each other like a melody. And so, first of all, we need to create a fourth. So one, two, three, four, there's our interval. Now we need to make sure that it's perfect. So D to G, would be perfect. However, this is a D flat because of the key signature, and so this also needs to move parallel down by a flat to make that perfect. So D flat to G flat is perfect. So here we've got to make a perfect fifth. So let's get the interval first. One, three, five. There's our fifth. 
Now we know that C to G would be a perfect fifth. However, this is a C sharp, so because this is raised by the key signature, we need to raise the G sharp to make that perfect. There we go then. So that's that question completed. We'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope that that's helpful to you. I hope that it's of benefit to your studies. I also hope that you're enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really fab. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resources that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.